Windows 11 has leaked, sporting a rather new design, and since the ISO is rarely available, well, I thought I would give it a try. Now, one quirk of this development build of the operating system is that you can't seem to run it or install it on a standard machine, whether that's a Ryzen CPU or an Intel one. It says that this system does not meet requirements. It seems like you need a TPM 2.0 compliant system, which I don't have, but luckily it runs on a virtual machine just fine. So let's fire it up and have a look. And... It's a Windows 10 reskit. The first thing that you'll notice is the taskbar and start menu button, as by default, they are both centered. This is bound to be controversial. I mean, ever since Windows 95, the start menu button has been pinned to the bottom left corner of your screen, at least by default. And what gets me here is that not only did Microsoft go to the effort of moving the start menu button and your taskbar icons and open applications to be centered and variable, but then they left the time and the app drawer pinned at the bottom right. Like, at least if you're gonna ruin everybody's muscle memory, ruin it all, do it properly. And speaking of the start menu, it's got a new look too. It looks very much like an app drawer that you'd find on Android or iOS. All of the apps are uh, just displayed by icons with text underneath, and when they're updating, they get grayed out with a progress bar on the bottom. You can press the All Apps button to see everything that's installed, or you can start typing, although I'm currently unsure if this new version of the Start menu has any better ability to actually search your PC than stock Windows 10. The other thing you'll notice is the new icons. Settings gets a very Android-esque look, as does Windows Explorer, and you even get a new Widgets button on the taskbar that loads msn.com. Wow, so cool. Also, when you open Explorer, you'll notice that everything is spaced out. Like, even the folders, which aren't any bigger, they just have more space between them. Like, why? Why is this double spaced? Why are all of the settings in the quick access section double spaced as well? Thankfully, it's pretty easy to revert these changes. For the taskbar, just go to taskbar settings and set left instead of centered in the top dropdown. As for the spacing, you can just go to the folder settings, uh, which aren't in the settings app, they're in their own standalone settings window, and enable compact view. And since we're talking about settings, I thought that Windows 11 would be the perfect opportunity for Microsoft to finally incorporate all of the fragmented controls that are split between the settings app and control panel. For example, in Windows 10, if you want to change your network settings, you can open the settings app and go to networks and change stuff there. Except if you want to change your network adapter settings, well, you can't do that in the settings app. You have to do that in control panel, in network and sharing center, and then change adapter options. In fact, there's even a shortcut in the settings app to open the adapter settings in control panel. Why this is split, I do not know, but I was hoping that Windows 11 would finally be able to bring those together and make it a relatively cohesive experience. So, they changed it all for Windows 11, right? No. As far as I can tell, nothing has changed except some extra settings for those new features. So why does Windows 11 exist? I mean, they've rolled out more substantial feature updates for Windows 10 in the past, so why a whole new version? Well, I'll leave the conspiracy theories to the comments, but there is one rumor that I think uh, is something that I, I thought was worth mentioning, which is support and optimizations for Intel's new Alder Lake CPUs coming out later this year. For those that don't know, Alder Lake is the codename for Intel's next generation of CPUs due to come out at the end of this year. The rumor has it that these Alder Lake CPUs are going to include two different types of CPU cores on the same chip. It's the same principle as your phone's chip uses. ARM calls it Big Little, Intel calls it Intel Hybrid Technologies. Essentially, the idea is that you have a set of high performance, high power cores and low power, high efficiency cores 
all on the same die. The low power cores handle the background running of the operating system, of you watching videos or browsing the web, but when you want to do something more intensive like fire up a game or render a video, the high power cores spring into action and turn on and let you do that task. That's one of the reasons why Apple's new M1 Max are so efficient and get such long battery lifetimes compared to the same chassis with a standard Intel CPU. As we saw when AMD's Ryzen CPUs first came out with their unique CCX design, when Microsoft finally made a CCX aware scheduler for Windows, performance improved as the operating system was better able to utilize the full power of the processor. That's the theory here. Microsoft launches a new version of the operating system with baked in support for this new style of CPU so that when Intel finally launches their new chips later this year, they can say works best with Windows 11. Nice and clear marketing, plus Microsoft gets to make some hype around a new version of Windows. Like if this was just another feature update, do you think it would be getting as much press as it is right now? I mean, I'm making a video about it, but odds are if this was just a new look for Windows 10, I probably wouldn't be. So I guess their plan is working. I should also mention that a lot of these UI changes seem to be trying to gear Windows more towards being touchscreen friendly. Hence the larger folder spacing by default, the taskbar moving, and the new start menu. These options are enabled by default in this build, but chances are by the time it gets to be a proper production release, they may not be enabled by default and may even have a, a semi-smart installer that will only enable them by default if you have a touchscreen connected when you install it. And of course, all of this is subject to change anyway. The official launch is on June 24th, so when it's officially available, I'll do a follow-up and see if anything has changed, and I'll hopefully be able to do some performance testing to see if there's any benefit to running Windows 11 instead. With that said, those are my thoughts and my take on this. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about Windows 11? Is it a, a sizable upgrade? Do you like the moving taskbar or would you pin it to the left? Are you gonna be sticking with Windows 10 for as long as you can or will you be upgrading immediately? And what do you think about the potential optimizations and the, the new, well, look of it? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you'd like to see more videos on Windows 11, performance benchmarking, and just generally PC gaming hardware, then do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. If you want to support the channel too, there is soon to be the YouTube join button you can hit, and also Patreon if you want to support me directly as well. There's also merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one. This is my car channel at the wheel, which you can check out on the end cards when that pops up. But there's also plenty of tech related designs like do, do not ask me for tech support and some other ones that I designed in Blender and Photoshop. So feel free to check, take a look. There's also a load of affiliate links in the description if you want to support me that way instead. There are links to Amazon and Overclockers UK if you're buying from there. There's also links to VPN options. There's Humble Bundle, Streamlabs OBS, and a whole load of other stuff, so do feel free to take a look and check out some more videos on the end cards as well if you want to keep watching. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one.